Welcome to the New York Medical College Faculty Book Corner. I'm Marie Asher. I'm the Associate Director for User Services at the Health Sciences Library at New York Medical College. And today I'm fortunate to be speaking with Dr. William Frischman, who is the Barbara and William Rosenthal Professor and Chairman of the Department of Medicine and Professor of Pharmacology here at New York Medical College, as well as being the Director of the Department of Medicine at Westchester Medical Center. Dr. Frischman has co-edited a book, now in its third edition, titled Cardiovascular Pharmacotherapeutics. And this is what we're here to talk about today. So, I, I note that you're a co-editor on this book. Yes. But what really struck me as I looked at the book is that you're also an author on a lot of the chapters. Yeah. So it's a large undertaking. It has to be a labor of love. I, it's a book with, with 39 contributors, 37 chapters. How yeah. long does a book like this take to put together? What's well, well the, the book, um, uh, to, to update uh, the book, it's the third edition, took about two uh, years. Um, because there are such rapid advances in the area of cardiovascular drug, uh, drugs, uh, cardiovascular pharmacotherapy, uh, to, uh, to get the book updated um, at one moment, when it's submitted for publication, is really a uh, is really a task. But the book is really um, uh, up to date, really through uh, probably March of uh, 2011. And in order to keep the book up to date, we also have a website that will uh, uh, keep it going forward because of the rapid changes that take place. Um, the first edition of the book um, came out in um, uh, 1997. Uh, um, the second edition in 2003, and this is actually the third edition. In between the major books, we do handbooks uh, that are more abridged versions, um, and uh, we're doing actually a third edition of the handbook uh, that'll come out uh, next year. That's a way of again trying to keep the book uh, uh, up to date. But again, it's a more it's, it's in a more abridged version of the larger uh, text. Um, and you're correct. I did. Um, uh, in order to keep sort of an evenness in the book, uh, uh, I, I uh, was involved with about 90% of, uh, of the chapters. Um, the advantage of that is that uh, uh, the writing style is consistent and uh, um, uh, redundancies are avoided. Uh, that will happen very often in multi-authored books where uh, uh, the editor really doesn't play a major role in the writing of the book. It's a really huge topic that yeah. most, all of us, if we live to advanced age, at some point are going to need some interve medical intervention to take care of our heart. Yes. So what, what are some of the, the things that have been going on in yeah. the last decade? Yeah. Well, it's more than in the last decade. The la I would say the last uh, 30 years uh, have really uh, provided us with, uh, we, we've actually seen a revolution in, in cardiovascular drug development. Uh, we had very primitive drugs available uh, when I started my uh, training um, in the early 1970s, and uh, subsequent to that now, uh, major classes of agents have become uh, available. For instance, for cholesterol now, we have outstanding agents uh, that we never could have dreamed about uh, uh, 30 years ago that have had a tremendous impact uh, on the natural history of heart disease. Uh, we have new drugs. Um, uh, for uh, 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 other cardiovascular conditions, for angina pectoris. Uh, uh, we have beta blockers and calcium entry blockers for the treatment of arrhythmia. Uh, we have these agents for the treatment of heart failure and hypertension. Uh, we have classes of agents called the angiotensin receptor inhibitors uh, and the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. If I was doing uh, uh, this book in 1970, the book probably would be one-eighth the size. Um, of what it is now because of the explosion of the drugs. We also have very good drugs for uh, uh, dissolving clots in the heart, uh, and, um, and, and this is demonstrated by the marked reduction that we're seeing in the United States uh, in stroke uh, and, and heart attack, uh, and the, the lengthening of, 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 of people's lives, uh, a great deal related to the use of these medications. And you're absolutely correct. Uh, most of the time, by the time we reach a certain age, we'll be on one of these uh, or two uh, cardiovascular agents. Uh, we also have improved uh, uh, diuretic 
uh, agents that are uh, uh, available. And um, what's interesting about drug development now is that uh, from the basic science, uh, when a new receptor gets discovered, a drug can be discovered that, to fit into that receptor. Uh, years ago, a lot of drug development was trial and error with, bilot with, with plants and other substances uh, that were available. Now, there's a real uh, scientific rigor behind uh, uh, drug development based on a lot of the basic science advances. The other thing from the basic science point of view is from the use of these agents, we've actually uh, uh, come into a better understanding of really what causes heart disease. Uh, and that's been sort of an interesting um, uh, a sort of breakthrough uh, that uh, when a drug is used and we see an effect, uh, often it, it helps us understand uh, the natural history of the illness better uh, than we have in the past. To give an example, we used to believe that uh, stimulating the heart in heart failure uh, was the ideal approach. Um, we have drugs like digitalis, which have been involved since the 1780s. Uh, turns out that approach may be completely wrong because agents that do the opposite appear to have a greater benefit. So very often we back into a better understanding of the natural history of illness really through uh, uh, the use of many of these agents. The other thing about the book that um, uh, I think uh, it makes it unique amongst other uh, textbooks on this uh, subject, and we think you know, ours is now the gold standard, uh, is that we have a chapter on alternative medicine, uh, which is becoming very, very, very popular now, uh, certainly uh, uh, amongst the uh, lay public, uh, and we discuss uh, the potential advantages and disadvantages of this type of treatment. We have basic chapters on uh, um, basic principles of pharmacology, the placebo effect, uh, pharmacoeconomics, um, uh, uh, drug adherence, convincing people to take their drugs, as well as a, a chapter on uh, uh, drugs of the future uh, that we predict will become available in the next five to ten years. Uh, um, included also in the book are uh, multiple appendices to make the book user-friendly, describing how to use all the drugs, uh, not only in the general population, but also how to use these drugs in special populations and people who might have kidney disease, people who might have um, uh, liver disease, uh, people who are pregnant, uh, uh, so that the book is actually a, a user-friendly book, uh, not just to provide information, but also practical prescribing information uh, for people who utilize the book. But at the same time, it does go very deeply into the, the science, the, science, the found scientific foundation behind the use of these different um, substances and the evidence base in terms yes. of the, the trials that have been done to um, look at effectiveness as well as some of the safety issues. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if you have any examples um, particular. Well, y yes, it's uh, b behind the development of uh, a drug is sort of uh, our sort of basic science principles that we uh, highlight, uh, but also uh, uh, the, or the clinical experiences that are needed uh, before a drug, in fact, gets approved. Uh, and we go into a great deal about the evidence, really, to support the, uh, the use of these drugs for practical, uh, uh, f for multiple conditions. Uh, I, I just have to mention um, uh, the first edition of the book that was conceived by uh, my, myself and my chief, uh, who, is, who's de who I dedicated the third edition uh, to. He was involved with me in the first two editions. Uh, Edmund Sonnenblick, who was a world-famous cardiac electrophysiologist. And he really set the example of how one can use basic science principles uh, and to help develop uh, drugs, and then also to help how drugs work, and also to, to, to better understand from how the drugs work the mechanisms of disease. And I think that you have a reputation here of carrying on that legacy uh, well, pretty well. I, yeah, no. <laughs> I, yeah. know, I know you're going to yeah. be humble. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah. What's interesting about the book also, we have contributions of former students of mine who are now national leaders uh, in, their, uh, uh, in various areas of cardiovascular pharmacology, um, included our um, other att attending physicians and faculty here at New York Medical College, uh, as well as uh, one student contributor and um, uh, some of our residents and fellows uh, contributed uh, to the uh, book. So for the most part, although we have some outside contributors, 
is truly a homegrown uh, effort. I'd like to see more of our, you know, this, this on the desk, I'm sure you would agree, of, of all of our students and, yes. and residents here at New York Medical College, where we have a very good cardiology program. Yes. The, the, um, the publisher, Cardiotext, is a, is a sort of a niche specialty publisher. Maybe you want to talk, talk yeah, about yes. that. Yes. Yeah, the first two editions were done by McGraw-Hill, and uh, Cardiotext is a niche, uh, uh, again, uh, a publisher that deals with essentially cardiac texts and um, uh, was able to give us a, 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 a great deal of sort of attention uh, uh, to help this uh, edition really come to the forefront. Um, many of the, uh, of, of the uh, major um, uh, publishers, uh, because of the fact that we have the Internet, uh, are really curtailing their, uh, their publication of, of, of books um, and Cardiotex is really a new company that's really looking to expand the numbers of cardiovascular volumes that are available for uh, the, the medical public. Um, it's not only also written for the medical public, uh, it's a book that not only clinicians uh, can use, but also uh, basic scientists who have interest in this area, uh, pharmacists who have interest in this area, nurses who might have interest in this area, um, it goes, uh, but, but essentially anybody who has any interest in cardiovascular drugs, whether uh, in clinical use or in uh, basic investigation. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share with us? No, no. Is, is that? Okay. Good. Yeah. This is the book, Cardiovascular Pharmacotherapeutics, now in its third edition, uh, edited by William Frischman and Dominic Stika. Thank you. Mm -hmm.